In the last video we looked at calculating a confidence interval for a population mean and in this video I'm going to um, cover a related topic and that is doing a hypothesis test for a population mean. And so for this video I'm going to look at uh, some rather interesting data on human body temperatures. So we'll load the data and take a look at it and so um, uh, I think this is a relatively small sample size again. Let's actually uh, take a look at, uh, I want to see the sample size. Uh, here it is. So we can see over here, uh, we've got 25 values. So a relatively small sample size. Um, actually, let me just uh, draw that uh, histogram again, but I'm going to make the bins slightly smaller so we've got a little bit more detail. There we go. Okay, that's a, that's a, I think that's a, a better uh, picture of the data here. So, um, we're doing a hypothesis test, so as usual we need to go through the four steps. So the first step is to state the hypotheses. Uh, so the um, Null hypothesis in this case is that uh, the mean human body temperature is 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. So these temperature measurements are in Fahrenheit and uh, 98.6, that's the magic number that uh, everybody knows as the uh, uh, what uh, the human body temperature is supposed to be. Um, you know that if, if uh, you take someone's temperature and their temperature is much higher than 98.6 then you know they're running a fever. So that 98.6 is one of those numbers that's kind of ingrained, um, uh, particularly in the states where they still work with Fahrenheit um, more, um, maybe less so in, in Canada, but I think even in Canada that 98.6 is like one of these magic numbers that everybody knows. Um, so that's our null hypothesis and our alternative hypothesis is that the mean human body temperature is different from 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, maybe that 98.6, that's not the right number. So, um, so that's, that's what we're testing here. So we've collected some data and we are going to see um, what the data say. So, uh, uh, that's the first step. Second step is to calculate the test statistic. So the test statistic, uh, the formula for that is given by, um, it's, a, it's a, a fraction and uh, in the numerator of the fraction is the sample mean minus the population mean in the null hypothesis. Okay, and then, then the denominator of the fraction is the standard error of the mean. Okay, so just as in the last video, um, because I don't want to make any rounding errors in my calculations, I'm going to have R store all these different pieces and then have R do the calculation with no rounding error at all. Okay, so it might look like there's a there's a there's an excess of code here that I don't really need, um, but trust me, uh, this is the way to do this kind of calculation accurately, is to name quantities that you want R to calculate with. So um, we'll, we'll, and we'll be consistent with the naming uh, that we used in the last video as well. And consistency is a good way to make sure that you don't make mistakes as well. So uh, we talked last time about alpha uh, as being the significance level. So uh, we're doing a hypothesis test here, so that's the significance level of the test that we're doing here. So it's, it's the usual thing, 0 0.05. Um, and then I'm going to call mu0, the, uh, that's going to be the, the uh, null value for the mean. So in the null hypothesis, we said that the population mean uh, is equal to 98.6, this magic number that everybody knows. So that's that's what I'm going to set up as as mu zero. Uh, these are my sample statistics: the sample mean and the sample standard deviation. Uh, n is the sample size, 25, and then the standard error is the sample standard deviation divided by the square root of n. And then here's my t-statistic calculation that I ran through just just now. 
and let's see what it is, it comes to minus 0 0.56, 0.6452. Uh, so that's the second step in the hypothesis test is to calculate the test statistic. Uh, the third step is to calculate the p-value. Okay, we're doing a two-tailed test here because in our alternative hypothesis we're saying that the mean human body temperature is different from 98.6. So it could be a number less than 98.6, could be a number greater than 98.6. So it's a two-tailed test and so to calculate our p-value we need to use a t-distribution with n minus 1 degrees of freedom. So n minus 1 is our um, degrees of freedom formula for this particular application. So I'll calculate that here. And then uh, this looks like a fearsome piece of code. Uh, but if we just run through what it is, um, we, we, we should be able to figure out what's going on here. So PT, if, if I want help on that, I can just type that into here. Okay, and we can find out. Um, so PT is is it's it's saying it's the the distribution function, and and you can you can look up what the arguments are and and find out the details and so on. Uh, but I'm just going to tell you what it is here. So this is going to calculate the probability of um, a, a T distribution with with whatever the degrees of freedom are. Um, less than, so on, on the, on the left-hand side of the absolute value of the test statistic. Okay, that's what this function is here. ABS is the absolute value. Okay, so uh, the absolute value of T in this case is 0.56. So if you imagine a, a, a bell curve representing the T distribution centered at zero, so 0.56 is, is going to be on the right on the right of it and then and this this piece of the function here is telling me the the probability under the curve to the left of that uh, uh, absolute value of the t statistic okay so you've got our, our, our bell curve you've got our, our t statistic and this and we've got an area of 0.7098819 to the left of it Okay, I'm, I'm building this up in pieces because there's a few things going on here. Uh, then I do 1 minus that. Okay, so 1 minus 0 0.7098819 is 0 0.2901181. Okay, so that must be the upper tail. Okay, so that's the upper tail to the right of the absolute value of the test statistic. This is a two-tail test though, so I need to have the upper tail and the lower tail. And because this is a symmetric distribution about zero, the upper tail is the same size as the lower tail. And so if I just multiply the upper tail by two, that's gonna give me what I want. That's gonna give me the p-value. So there's my p-value, that's step three. And then step four, make a decision, draw a conclusion. Uh, the decision rule, as always, reject the null hypothesis in favor of the alternative hypothesis if the test if the p value is less than the significance level so here's the p value it is not less than the uh, significance level okay so i cannot reject the null hypothesis in this case okay my conclusion is I cannot reject the null hypothesis. My conclusion is not I accept the null hypothesis. I just cannot reject it. And then I need to translate that back into the context. So what I'm saying is this data is consistent with a population mean human body temperature of 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, I cannot reject that, that uh, hypothesis. Okay, so... Uh, that's interesting. So that suggests that that 98.6 um, is 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 a reasonable number for people to be using as the mean uh, human body temperature. Uh, let's uh, calculate a confidence interval. So I'll I'll I'm not going to dwell on this because we went through the details in uh, a lot of detail 
uh, went through the details in a lot of detail we went through the details in the last video um, but there's there's the results or as I explained in the last video we can just use the t.test function uh, sorry I'm, I'm, I'm skipping ahead here let me just go back uh, let's look at that um, confidence interval just quickly so we're 95% confident based on this sample that the population mean body temperatures between 98.2 and 98.8 okay um, okay now let's go to the t.test function so we used this function in the last video when we calculated a confidence interval for the mean you can use the same function to do a hypothesis test in addition to a confidence interval okay and so if you just use this piece of code here uh, you'll get output for both um, techniques so so here's here's the output for the hypothesis test so there's our test statistic there's our degrees of freedom there's our p-value okay the p-value that was that was what we calculated up here Okay, the 0.58 so this number here is this is is this number here uh, it, it reminds us what the alternative hypothesis is and then right below it it gives us a 95% confidence interval as well okay um, So the reason this is so interesting is because um, for this small sample of 25 um, we could not reject the null hypothesis. So 98.6% 90 sorry 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit uh, is is not ruled out by this data set. But if we actually take a larger sample so there there's a larger sample available uh, I don't have the um, full data set for this but I do have the sample mean and the sample standard deviation okay and so we've got a larger sample I can run through the the whole calculation again and okay so all, all this code is just the same as we did before and now I get a p-value of 2.5 times 10 to the minus 7 so now I do reject the null hypothesis in favor of the alternative hypothesis because I've got a p-value smaller than 0.05 so whoa that's interesting when I take a larger sample I do reject the null hypothesis and that tells me that in this larger sample this larger sample is not consistent with a population mean body temperature of 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit Wow what's going on um, well let's look at a 95% confidence interval so the confidence interval goes from 98.1228 to 98.3772 98.6 is not in that interval Wow. So all this time have people been using the wrong number? Turns out they have. And it's all because of rounding errors. So let me just read you what's going on here. So um, there's a conversion between Fahrenheit and Celsius. Um, yeah, what do you do? You multiply by something and add on 32 or something like that. I, I forget what exactly. Um, but it turns out that 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit is exactly equivalent to 37 degrees Celsius. So what's going on here is that the original measurements of human body temperature whenever the, those were done a long long time ago they were done on the Celsius scale and then someone 
who is being very sloppy, rounded the mean to the nearest degree. Okay, which is, mm, yeah, uh, I'm not a fan of of rounding. <laughs> um, well, sure, when you're presenting a final answer, yeah, that's fine, round. But if you're going to use that number again um, in another calculation, and you're going to use the rounded version of it, you're going to you're going to compound rounding errors left and right and end up with highly inaccurate results. Um, turns out that the actual mean of body temperature is 98.25 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, it's, it's, it's in this interval, it's 98.25, it's not 98.6. But if you convert 98.25 to, to uh, Celsius, you get 36.8. And if you round 36.8, you get 37. Okay, and so what happened here was was people thought, oh, 37. Uh, wonder what that is in fa in Fahrenheit. And if you convert 37 degrees Celsius into Fahrenheit, you get 98.6. Okay, so you got you get the wrong answer. Okay, the correct answer is 98.25 degrees Fahrenheit or 36.8 degrees Celsius. So, uh, so interesting, interesting stuff here. Uh, anyway, so that's an illustration of uh, doing a hypothesis test for a population mean. Uh, and this is often just referred to as a one sample t-test. Okay.